feature, and it's ridiculous. So the first one that we recorded. Yeah. SAO um, voice actors gone wild. <laughs> so the first episode was Share Me Myself and Ben Diskin, uh, who plays Death Gun. And he lost this game that we were playing, so he had to sell cereal in Death Gun's voice. And what he says. So everything was pretty much PG until this. Uh, oh, uh, I'll just say you have to listen because it's not an 18 plus panel. I don't think you could get. I don't even think you could get the gist of it without like. Uh, I'll give the gist. Let's, yeah, no, let's just let them do their homework. <laughs> it's so funny about choking you with his. Oh. 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 If you don't eat this. We have cereal! <laughs> Good morning! <laughs> but also, during said panel, uh, during said uh, radio program that we were recording, we took a break because Hidaway, the first time we did it, Hidaway was like, let's do it again, and you guys don't think everything is so funny because we can't hear you, you're just laughing the whole time, you're not saying anything. Oh, this was the next one. So Bryce chose to eat cereal the entire time. Because he was like, they won't stop me. I didn't want Ben to show up and choke me with his... Fair enough. <laughs> hands, right? Hands, that's what we're talking about? What? Hands? Yeah, yeah, hands. Yeah, hands. Yeah. So, because he is deaf then. So, Bryce was like eating cereal, so the whole time you just hear random crunching throughout the entire thing. And it's radio, so you can't see us, so you're just like, what's that noise? Like, this isn't distracting, right? <laughs>
against the wall, but there's like all the sister wives. That was fun. You can find that on Twitter somewhere. A hundred people. Anyway, looking forward to uh, answering questions and getting to chat with all of you and the autograph sessions and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Sherry Lee. Uh, you guys are so awake this morning, it's awesome. I do too, and a smoothie, but this is supposed to be relaxing and this is coffee, so it's not, so I don't know what's happening. Um, so I need bags. Uh, I'm very excited, I love working on the show, uh, and I love getting to hang out with these people. This, I think Sword Art, I think it's like this with a couple of shows, but Sword Art in particular, we really feel like one giant family, so anytime we get to hang out together, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, so you guys get to witness that uh, for the next hour. Uh, but thank you guys so much. Like, the fact that this panel is full says a lot about how amazing the support is for the show, which we never expected it to be like this, and it's been an amazing journey to see, like, when we premiered the show in Boston, now where it is, and that we've got a, a movie premiering uh, in March, and hopefully we'll get to dub it, but it's just insane. And that's, that's honestly because of you guys. They would not keep making it if you guys didn't love it, so thank you so much. Cereal. Other players can 
defenders can be called to assist you in the heat of battle. If you're an ally whose journey is already underway, you're summoned to enlist their aid. Elsewhere, other, others may be in need of your help. You're sent to offer them your best move. Summon friend Dad can also be traded to street pass. Go forth and mingle, warrior, and eat fruit loops. <laughs>
So the question is, what would happen if the cast of SAO was thrown into the Attack on Titan board? <laughs> In a video game or outside of the video game? Outside of the game. Kitty oh. Toe would be smashed immediately. <laughs> he, he wouldn't even know that Titans were attacking because he would be playing whatever video games in that world would be, and his ears would be covered with something. So you wouldn't even hear them coming. They'd be like, some creepy one would be like sneaking up behind him. Like, you wouldn't even notice him. And... Yeah, I'd probably be like lying in my bed, you know, with my link start thing on, not even knowing what the heck was going on, I'm guessing. <laughs> Yeah, gamers wouldn't fare very well. <laughs> I think maybe if it was the in-game characters, they'd do a little better. Because Kirito would just be cheating, and... <laughs> yeah.
We will rebuild. <laughs> My face hurts from laughing. I liked having that nickname. Clearly, I wore that everywhere. But I was also kind of like, 
uh, I do have a pretty unique voice, and I was already active. I was doing a lot of community theater, and I was doing dance, and I was doing commercials in New York, and um, it just kind of like snowballed into me only doing voiceovers. Like as an actor, like you'll notice a lot of actors are like really known for one genre. I mean, sure there are exceptions, but like there are really amazing like Broadway actors, or amazing TV actors, or amazing film actors, like. I just happened to, like, as I grew as an actor, like, voiceovers kind of emerged as the thing that I was really, really good at. So even though I was doing all sorts of acting, like, voiceovers was always the thing that I would work on the most, and that's why I like to say it chose me. <laughs> yeah. It's a good story. Another reason why I have a girl crush on you today. Um, so for me, I, I kind of, I mean, not the same story, but... I, I had an instance where I was I was going to school at Michigan State and I was studying to be a producer um, uh, behind the scenes and I was working for Michigan Public Broadcasting and I was also working at a talent agency booking talent and the guy that uh, that owned the agency set me up on a commercial audition. He's like, "Why don't you go read for this radio spot?" And I was like, "No, I really don't want to do that. I'm you know, behind the scenes." He's like, "Just go, just go. You can be perfect." So I go to, to read, I do the audition, and like a week later I'm in the car with my roommate and I hear the spot on the radio. In the car, my, my friend's like, hey, isn't that you? And I'm like, I, yeah, I think that is me. So they had actually just taken my audition and mixed it and put it on the radio without booking me. So that was kind of the beginning of it where I sort of realized, hey, you know, I think I could do this, this is kind of fun. So then, I sort of didn't do anything else with it there. I, I graduated and went on to be a producer for uh, Michigan Public Broadcasting. Then I went to Chicago and I started doing improv and theater. And I just kind of, that whole thing with like the stage and the theater and, you know, stuff, I don't know, opportunities just kept coming up for voiceover. It was like, hey, do you want to do that? Hey, do you want to do this? And sometimes when it's like you have an opportunity that's that's like being handed to you, you go, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, and then it just kind of snowballed from there, you know, in Chicago and then in L.A. You know, I was doing on camera in L.A., but I hated it. I hated the auditioning process. It's not fun at all. And, it, and the same sort of thing happened with voiceover. It just kind of, like, um, yeah. Like Cassandra said, it just sort of happened where voiceover became like the, you know, the mainstay of my acting career. Uh, I got into voiceover uh, because I wanted to act when I was a kid and I got into acting when I was six and my ultimate life goal was to be on Barney. Uh, so Barney was the reason that I became an actor and by default became a voice actor because at seven, um, I had uh, the voiceover agent for the adult department of the big agency that I was with called me in and like, this is like how long ago it was, they had a closet for their booth and they recorded it on a tape player and then they would send us the tapes to the audition, and to, the, to the studio, so that was our audition. And uh, uh, she said, Jeremy has a really cute voice and 7-Eleven wants to have a three-year-old daughter that they're going to animate walking through this magical world with like how Slurpees are made or how pretzels are made or donuts are made and I would have to narrate this whole thing. But three-year-olds couldn't use all of the big vocabulary needed. So they got a seven-year-old who could read really well who sounded like a child. Um, and then from there, I was doing voiceover commercials every week because the studios would say, well, we know her, she was in last week and we have this kid. And so I was just leaving school uh, during lunch and I would record voiceover commercials. And I got into anime voice acting after I graduated from high school and had an audition at Funimation and they just kept letting me stick around. But uh, I've been acting since I was a kid. I do a little bit of everything. Um, and I, I love it, and I think, uh, I love everything about the business, and I've worked as a casting assistant, so I can see what that's like, I've worked on the production side, I've worked at a talent agency, uh, just because I cannot get enough of this business. And it's not, I, it's a tough business, but I love it so much that I tolerate all of the not-so-fun parts, because there, there are some fun parts, and one of the most fun parts is getting me out with you guys, so that's a bonus that I did not know was a thing when I became an actor, so that's cool. 
I grew up around uh, voice acting. Both my mom and dad were voice actors. Um, the first time I got in the booth, uh, I was eight. My dad was working on Power Rangers. Um, he was Rito Revolto, the skeleton dude on Power Rangers. Yeah. And a bunch of the monsters. And uh, at the end of his session, the director was like, we need a kid's voice. And my dad's like, he's a kid, throw in the booth. <laughs> Oh my god, that. you just sounded exactly like your dad. <laughs> so my dad had the exact opposite voice as me. Uh, he's like big and burly and did all these giant monsters. And my voice hasn't changed since middle school. <laughs> so, uh, it's not gonna happen. I think if I started smoking and drinking whiskey now, I would still never sound like that. <laughs> that was a great imitation though. I never thought I would be a, a professional voice actor. I always kind of just did it for fun. Um, I used to prank call girls in middle school as their friends. And <laughs> uh, so I knew I liked making voices. Um, it wasn't until after, uh, like, right as I was graduating college, uh, I thought I was going to be an attorney. I went to UCLA and studied political science and philosophy. Yeah, UCLA! Um, <laughs> And uh, I thought I was going to go to law school, and then I booked a job, and then I booked another one, and booked another one, and I thought, well, law school can wait. I'll make funny voices in a booth. And I haven't looked back. <laughs> Thank you. frustrated by that, that would affect the battle, and then obviously Asuna and Kirito would win. If Kirito and Asuna were having an argument because Kirito is making some questionable choices, then Lucy and Natsu would win. It's just like, you don't know on the day all of the extenuating are Right, well, but then, then they would win because I'm down to play. And then, then I feel bad about it. It's just, you know. But yeah, you talk about how things would go with Natsu, and I'll call Todd while you're Okay. <laughs> Dominate. Just destroy them right away. No contest. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, I think it is really tough to beat Kito, Um because he's he's leveled so high um, that any attacks wouldn't even make his life bar go down at all. <clears throat> Oh my god, Tony Bosch. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
how would I react if he broke out of prison? Yeah, oh my God, I would have, talk about an insane asylum. Um, well, maybe I would be ready for him the second time around. Yeah. I'm gonna say that I would be ready for him because at that point in, in the story, Sidon has overcome her fear of guns. And I would say that he better watch himself if he decides to come back after me. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That my my sister wives got my back, and that guy over there. <laughs> and then take the credit. Of course. I believe there's a premiere of the movie happening in Los Angeles on March 1st. So I think we've all been invited to that. So it's very possible that we'll all make it and see it together.
if somebody catches us. <laughs> Definitely gonna have to tag him on the Twitter. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I have his Twitter handle. Ten more minutes! Oh, fun killer! <laughs> I mean, all of these events are so cool. When when you're voice acting, you're in a booth by yourself, and if you deliver a line that's funny or that's emotional, you just hear, good job moving on. And uh, this is like, a voice actor's applause. Yeah. When, when you have people show up and, and talk about the roles that you've done, it's it's so cool. Um, so that's why voice actors love doing these shows. There's so many, and there's a couple that come to mind. Uh, I think it's just mind blowing. Each time we do like a big event where we get to premiere the show and watch that with people is really exciting. Getting to go around the world, which I never thought would be a thing, and find out that there are fans all over the world that love the shows and that it's a universal thing, that's very cool. Um, but I had one, I, when I got cast as Sailor Venus and Sailor Moon, um, we had to keep it very, very top secret, couldn't say anything, and there was... Um, a woman who had heard that I loved Sailor Moon, it was the first anime that I watched, and she was standing in line to get fairy tale stuff signed, but her daughter was like four or five, and she was dressed as Sailor Venus. I knew I had been cast, but I knew I could not announce it for another like four months, and she had the uh, Sailor Venus, um, she had like her little hair bow and her little Venus doll, and she was dressed, and I was like, you look so cute, can I have a picture with you? And the little girl was like, uh, I hope you get to be Venus. You're my favorite. Will you sign this? And I was like, I don't know if I can sign this. And her mom said, we've been watching the 90s uh, version. Um, but I heard they're getting another one. And I'm so excited because now I get to relive my childhood through the eyes of my daughter. And uh, so that was just so cool to see how anime like, lived on. And me getting to watch that version and having that with her and then getting sent to autograph this little girl and take a picture and not say anything but her mom texted me because I've told the story a couple times she tweeted me the picture and she was like we know we are the first ones we remember and I was like oh my god that's so cool um, and then yesterday you giving the speech at the panel about why we do what we do in for confessionals um, I've been like a horrible person all weekend because of my character uh, but Bryce got to give this great speech that I think is pretty representative of all of us voice actors and how we feel. And getting to deliver that to fans, yeah. Bryce did an incredible job. And at one point I got very, very teary-eyed because I'm like, he's getting to deliver this to fans. This is absolutely how we all feel. And that was definitely one of my favorite moments as well. I thought that was really cool. Thank you guys <laughs> over the world. Yeah, he's asking what we would all do if we do King Jedi. <laughs> I think in, in Gun Girl, Kirito essentially becomes a Jedi. <laughs> I mean, I wanted two things for that one. Personally, I wanted him to have a lightsaber, photon sword, um, and I wanted him to cut a bullet in half with it. And he did. <laughs> Indeed you did. Fun. Yeah. Um, I have, I put on, it's called like Oculus Prime. 
Yeah, so I put that on one day while I, we were like on lunch, like, we were on lunch in the middle of recording a video game and someone had an Oculus Prime and I put it on and everyone had already tried it. Everyone who was there, and I was like the nerd, like uncool person who had dreaded it. So like I put it on and I was literally like, <laughs> and by the time I took it off, everyone had left the lunchroom and was like back in the studio and I was like, oh my god. But it was mind blowing, it was crazy. Um, and it's just going to keep getting more and more advanced, so, yeah. I tried the Oculus at, uh, at a convention and uh, it was this game where you have to dodge bullets. It's like oh, stick figures, oh, and they're yeah. shooting at you, and like, if you stop, time slows down, and you just see the bullet coming at you Whoa. really slowly, and you have to like, basically move Whoa. out of the way. It was crazy. <laughs> have you ever tried VR? No, I only, I only had somebody, uh, was a Japanese, Shout out to the 
have the autograph session, a VIP autograph session at 1, mm -hmm. and then a free autograph session at 4.30 today, um, and then another autograph session tomorrow morning. Check your schedules, it's either 10 or 11, and then I'll be doing the women in, um, is it women in anime or women in voiceover? Panel, whatever it is. With this lady. Yeah, and, and you can find me at Michelle Ruff V01 on Twitter. Um, and uh, Michelle Ruff voiceover on uh, Facebook. Hell to the yay. Um, yeah, so this weekend I will also be on the uh, Women in Voice Network panel. Uh, we're doing autographs later today, like right after this, I think. Uh, I will be filming professionals around. Uh, we're actually doing a big scene that you guys can be in. It will be on you guys on Sunday after closing ceremonies. I believe it will be in this room. Uh, so if you want to come, we will be filming you, you will be in the series, all that fun stuff. Uh, and, uh, oh, I just got informed like five seconds ago that the Confessionals cast will be doing autographs in the exhibit hall from 12.30 to 1.30. Uh, you can get your Team Valley Flock t-shirts. I'm not even going to announce Team Malcolm because many of you are on Team Malcolm. We need to have a conversation. Oh, oh, it's just your, okay. Okay, so 12.30 to 1.30 in the exhibitors hall, you will have a chance to purchase a Team Battle Clock or Team Malcolm t-shirt for confessionals or a poster. Um, so I will be down in the exhibitors hall for that hour if you are interested. Um, I, I have autographs right after this as well, and tomorrow I'm in the Men of Voice Acting. Uh, like the Men of Voice So watch, watch Twitter and Facebook for times and such. Thanks guys! This Thank you guys so much for coming! Thank you for coming! Hi, we need everybody to evacuate this room in the We have a ton of people waiting to come in for the next camera. If you want to come up and talk to them,